Hey everyone, in today's video I want to show you how to use the large color wheel stamp from my watercolor workbook stamp set. If you want to see all the stamps in the set and how it looks, you can go to the designated video. I will leave a link below as well as all of the information on how you can get your stamp set. I highly suggest taking advantage of the pre-order because once I order the stamps from the pre-order, I don't know how much extra sets I will have available. So if you're interested, please take advantage of the pre-order. So this was one of the stamps that I absolutely knew I had to include. I love color wheels. I mean, they are not only pretty, but they're a really great way of getting to know your colors. And the whole idea of the, the watercolor workbook stamp set is to have a really easy and fast way of playing with your colors, which then you can keep as a reference. And that will save you so much time because if you want to start painting if you want to sit down and paint, you can just look in your sketchbook or however you decide to store your uh, stamps and see how colors look together, which combinations are speaking to you that day, and you don't have to start from scratch every time. So this was the idea behind the, the stamp set. So the traditional way of using color wheels is to place colors on the color wheel and then either create mixtures or, or just fill the spaces with the colors that kind of coordinate with that space from your palette. But there are a few ways that you can take advantage of this design and I'm going to show you a few examples. So I'm starting with, you can see I just stamped a bunch of them on a piece of paper. This is Canson Montval 200 uh, GSM paper. It's cellulose paper. It is very, very affordable and I don't really like to paint on it, but for swatches, I find it to be really perfect. I don't have to get precious with it. I buy a huge um, pad uh, from you can order it from Amazon and it will last you a really long time and you can you know play experiment create all these watches without uh, feeling precious about the paper now I do recommend testing your you know final choices on the paper that you're actually going to paint on colors look different on different papers and you know some papers are not only the the shade of them is different there are very white papers and then there are more cream colored papers but some papers really make your colors look more vibrant and others kind of dull it so i'm not even sure about the science behind it but for me one of my the papers that i really really love is the cornwall hanemule and one of the reasons that i love it is because uh, i feel that the colors are very very vibrant on it so i do recommend you know once you decide which colors you want to use test them again on your chosen paper but for all of these swatches especially if you have a large collection and you want to experiment a lot and play a lot and create a large reference, you know, bank for yourself, uh, I absolutely, I have no problem using a kind of cheaper cellulose paper. And the Canson Montval is actually a pretty good quality in my uh, opinion. So that's what I'm using today. And I'm just filling it with the colors from my palette and I'm watering them down. So the outer arch has the kind of pure saturated color or pretty saturated and then I slowly add more water. This is a great exercise because I use a lot of kind of watered down lighter washes and sometimes it's surprising the colors that you get from um, you know a tube of paint once you water them down and you might find you have preferences like some colors I don't know, they stay, they're very tinting and they still stay quite intense even if you add water and you need to add a lot of water. So this is a great way of just familiarizing yourself with your paints and how they behave and how they look 
once you water them down. But I will show you other examples of things you can do to kind of explore the possibilities. And one of them is adding white. So the use of white and black in watercolors is uh, perhaps controversial or, you know, some people will say never to use white. The paper is the white in watercolors. And then some people will say never use black. You can mix your own black and blank black used from a tube uh, is uh, very like dead. Um, I think that there are always ways to make something work for you. And I agree with certain advice, <laughs> but uh, I find there are blacks that are really beautiful and I do prefer to mix my own neutrals. I usually don't mix blacks. I just mix uh, grays and maybe like muted purples or pinks. But uh, there are all also like really great black colors that are not dead and are not flat and are quite transparent and granulating. For example, uh, Lunar Black in the Daniel Smith range is a beautiful color. I don't think it deadens the mixtures. And then with white, I personally love to use white. Um, I think it adds to my artwork. So at the beginning, I was like, this is completely useless. And I tossed the white out of all of my palettes. And now you can see I have a large full pan of white in my palette and I use it quite often. So this is another way that you can see what your colors can do, gradually add white to them. But the point is, at the end of the day here, is to explore your colors, see what they can do, and this particular stamp gives you a really fast and easy way of doing that. And it takes practice sometimes to get those, um, you know, that gradient. But I find it to be really important in the process of painting with watercolors because what I did in the uh, first probably couple of years of my watercolor journey is that I used a lot of saturated watercolors. I didn't necessarily mix things in my palette. And I learned from, you know, some artists, they like to let the paint mix on their painting, but it just didn't work for me. So learning to play with the different saturation levels of my paints, water them down, use lighter washes, and then add accents of you know, saturated color. It took me time to understand that's what I wanted to do in my paintings. And that was kind of the effect I was searching for. So this is just a really great reference tool. And you can practice doing those gradients or adding the white or later on creating different mixtures, neutralizing your colors with this stamp set. And now I'm just going to fussy cut all of my colored quarter color wheels and I'll show you what you can do with this next. Ideally, it would be nice to have um, a section for each one of your colors, but um, I have here a selection of at least my most favorite colors for my palette. And hopefully slowly I'll also swatch the rest of my colors. The nice thing about using this uh, color wheel like this, uh, a few reasons. First of all, I think it's a really easy way to see the kind of gradient you can get from the colors. So not only swatching them in, you know, quite an intense um, application, but then you can gradually add water. It's also a good exercise to learn about those uh, ratios. And I try to like challenge myself that the last little section here is almost just water, but it actually turned out after it dried, it turned out a bit more intense than I would have liked. So in some colors like this one, definitely I could have um, added less water, but still it gives me a nice overview of how the colors look also uh, a little bit more diluted. And 
And then the cool thing is that if you uh, stamp them like this and cut them, you can store them in a little envelope, for example. And then when you want to start a new painting, before you even do the whole color mixture stuff, you can play around with these. So for example, I'll start here with kind of my yellows. Then I have pinks here. Um, then I'm just following roughly the color wheel. Then purples, more purple, blue, and greens, turquoises, and then the earth tones are more in the middle, but I'll leave them aside for now. So then you can just start kind of testing things and you know cover up some colors and play around and see which colors you like and then of course you can uh, move these around cover other areas and I think it's a really good exercise to play around with uh, different color combinations so for me let's say right now I'm really loving the Lucas uh, red and then if I wanted the Lucas Naples yellow red sorry and if I wanted to pair it with let's say a green then I can see uh, of course you could also cut this here in the middle I'm just trying to avoid having a lot of small pieces because I'm just messy <laughs> but uh, you could do that or you could fold it just to get um, you know the idea if you wanted to see certain colors next to each other so, for example, I do like how these two are looking. And so I could do that. And I could fold this if I wanted to. And then I can see if I wanted to add a turquoise. Um, I actually like how the cascade green is looking with these. I think that's nice. Um, not sure I'm into those right now. And then with blues. Um, this looks interesting. I like so I'm gonna leave the cascade green and kind of cover this undersea green and Here I have lunar blue and If I wanted to add moon glow, I do like that combination and then probably I would only need a Pink or you know, you can see this is a really beautiful color scheme that is um, a little bit more muted doesn't have like really bright colors but I feel it's still like rich and still a bit colorful but then if I wanted to I could really make it pop with these so you can really play and kind of see without committing to anything and without having to paint again and again and again although you know that's fun but sometimes if you're just you want like a quick idea I mean, look how we can transform this color scheme and create something really vibrant like this. So you can really play around quickly and, um, and get different ideas. And then once you're settled on a few colors, you can stamp it again and then uh, start with the mixes like I did with the the color wheel videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the other ones showing all the ways you can use the watercolor workbook stamp set. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.